Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, NWC Nation. This is Ronnie Stockholm, and I am proud to bring you the winter cheer and a jam-packed edition of NWC Tonight. And tonight's episode is extra special because, in celebration of the final show of 2023, we are delivering a jam-packed double edition. That's right, we have nearly a dozen matches on tap on this ultra-special episode of America's favorite wrestling program. Tonight, you will see the INCW Women's Champion Anna Sokolov defend her title against the winner of the Make Your Mark Battle Royal, Evelyn Sin. You will also see the PWA Tag Team Champions Reckless Love defend their titles against the exciting new team of Danica Raven and Chris Knight. Plus, you will bear witness to the final round of the INCW Tag Team Number 1 Contender Tournament as the Cold Snakes, Insult to Injury, and La Familia meet in a three-way tornado tag match to determine the Number 1 Contenders to the Diners Club INCW Tag Team Championships. All this, plus you will see the NWC World Champion and the INCW Champion in action tonight in exciting exhibition matches. All this and much, much more on tonight's very special year-end holiday episode of NWC Tonight. Let's take you to ringside for our first bout. And what an exciting way to start off our show. We're going to be seeing the singles debut of the new sensation El Vatore. Now, El Vatore, ladies and gentlemen, is the child, the daughter of INCW veteran and queen of the void, D.A. We saw L make her NWC debut last week in the Make Your Mark Battle Royal. We're going to see what she can do here tonight in singles competition. And she'll be going up against Sarah Davis, a veteran of INCW. And of course, as you can see her, she is flanked by her newly announced tag team partner, the Irish Rose, Lara Delaney. This should be an exciting bout, ladies and gentlemen. And we're taking you to ringside as our competitors are preparing to make their way to the ring. Now, folks, this is very exciting because DA, a, a standout in uh, INCW, um, a championship contender, uh, one of the most popular and, uh, and enigmatic characters in all of INCW, um, she disappeared uh, a couple of seasons ago only to resurface here with her daughter representing the Void Dimension. Now, this El Vatore, uh, we don't know if we're going to be seeing DA in the ring, but uh, as we saw at the Make Your Mark Battle Royal, the apple does not fall far from the tree. This statuesque, impressive young lady uh, had made some pretty impressive waves in that Battle Royal. We're going to see if she can parlay that success into... Uh, into singles uh, success here in our women's division. Now, El Vittore, uh, you may not be able to see it from this angle, folks, but she is an extremely tall individual, standing near seven feet tall, a very, very tall, uh, powerful competitor, had a vicious choke slam that she used to great effect in the Make Your Mark Battle Royal. Her opponent tonight, uh, the INCW veteran Sarah Davis, is going to need to be on her toes in order to compete with uh, with this very, very impressive rookie. Now you notice here, Sarah Davis is flanked by, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Lara Delaney. Now Lara Delaney uh, made her debut here in NWC last season, had some success, a very dynamic, charismatic young lady. Sarah Davis never quite found her footing when she was an INCW regular. Of course, you can see here she has a new look, a new attitude, and she has teamed with the Irish Rose, uh, both of them sporting that, uh, that matching red hair and, uh, and those green outfits. Um, hopefully, the, we will get to see these two in tag team action soon. But Sarah Davis certainly interested in redefining expectations and showing that she has what it takes to ascend to the top of the women's division. The very stacked women's division, uh, as uh, many of you saw, many new additions to the roster with that battle royal uh, last week. This should be an exciting bout, friends. And of course, this is the first of 11 matches that we're going to be seeing tonight in this stuffed double edition, this holiday edition of NWC Tonight. Referee rings the bell and we are underway 
Now, of course, Sarah Davis, also a very large individual, uh, she is not going to be giving up a tremendous amount of power to El Vittori, but I've got to think anyone is going to, to need to be on their toes when dealing with the just unbelievable size of this young lady. Look at this here. What is Sarah Davis preparing to do? Ricochets off the rope and just a diving spear straight between the ropes right into El Vittori. Welcome to NWC, uh, Princess of the Void Dimension. Goodness gracious, what a way to start this fantastic episode. Big spinning heel kick by Sarah Davis. Um, so far, El Vittori seems to have been caught slightly off guard. I don't know if she was expecting uh, Sarah Davis to come at her with such power and such force. Sarah Davis elbowing out. And coming off the ropes with a forearm, takes the large and in-charge uh, El Vittori down. Goes for the pin. One. Just a one count so far. Sarah Davis definitely interested in making her mark here tonight. El manages to take her down. Spins her around. Oh, and once again, Sarah Davis with a heads-up maneuver. Managing to keep uh, El Vittori on her toes. What's she doing here? Sends her to the ropes. Goes for a drop kick, misses it though. Oh, and an assist, an unintentional assist from the referee helps L get her balance back, and L comes back with some vicious looking kicks. And what's this here? Big time sit out power bomb. This is where the power, the strength of this tall young lady uh, is really going to come into play. Now, folks, uh, El Vittore, despite her power, she is a Oh my goodness, would you look at that buckle bomb and goes for a quick pinfall here. One. Only a one count so far. Now, folks, L is a rookie here, not only in NWC, but uh, but in professional wrestling in general. Uh, she may lack some of the polish of some of our more seasoned veterans, but she has a champion's pedigree, and, uh, and, and she has obviously a tremendous amount of power that she can draw upon. We'll have to see if that power and this enthusiasm and her her legacy here can overcome um, her, her experience disadvantage. And you can see here Sarah Davis taking advantage of some of that uh, inexperience. Look at this, just driving El Vittore's head into the canvas over and over again. El is going to need to regroup, trying to pull herself up there on the side of the ring, and just eats a tremendous shoulder block from Sarah Davis, sending her out of the ring and what in the world is Sarah doing here she's up on that top rope she couldn't possibly be considering would you look at that flipping senton takes Elvatore down on the floor and I've got to say folks Sarah Davis incredibly impressive here as L has had a very difficult time getting out of the blocks every time she appears to poised to take an advantage Sarah Davis has been able to reverse her way out of it preventing L from having a, a, a tremendous amount of momentum in this match so far. Davis once again goes for that senton, but L able to sidestep it, and she is trying to, to get her mojo working here, and look at this big time elbow, uh, looks kind of similar to a Birminghammer from uh, Brawler Beckett there, just smashing into Sarah Davis. Sends Sarah back into the ring. Every single maneuver that El Vittore... Oh my goodness, would you look at that drop kick? Folks, I was going to say that every single maneuver, even the simplest maneuver done by this large woman, um, has tremendous effect. These kicks, folks, uh, that's like being hit with a redwood being swung at you. Uh, my goodness, would you look at that? Just a vicious buzzsaw-style kick. And using that weight advantage that she has there... El Vittori, just a gigantic individual, has finally taken control here in this match. And she is not prepared to relinquish it. Not Nothing pretty about those kicks, folks, but she is, is doing what it takes to chop Sarah Davis down to size. Of course, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this is El Vittori's very first professional bout. Oh, and would you look at that? Davis with a heads-up leg sweep. But... Up in the air, and just a tremendous double underhook brain buster. Oh my goodness, she might have put Davis out. One, two, 
And just like that, El Vittore wins her debut match. She absorbed a tremendous amount of damage from a very game Sarah Davis here throughout the course of this match, but all it took was a series of, of long-legged kicks and that vicious, vicious-looking uh, double-arm hook brain buster, and that is all she wrote. Folks, this is going to be the start of big things for this young lady. As soon as she gets some seasoning under her belt, um, I, 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 would, I would definitely see her making some tremendous waves here in NWC. Congratulations to El Vittore and to DA uh, here on this tremendous debut singles match in NWC. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're on to our men's division, and would you look at this? El Mil Mojitos and, and Tiger Jade have, uh, have been allies since NWC began, uh, hearkening back to their days back in uh, INCW, but as of late, over the course of the last season, in fact, even back during that last season of INCW, uh, Tiger Jade has gone through a tremendous um, uh, transformation, you might say. He went from being a fan favorite, the legendary masked grappler Tiger Gold. Uh, after losing his mask to the spoiler, he obtained from his friend Mil Mojitos the fabled Jade Tiger Mask. And ever since donning that mask, it has changed him. He has become a, uh, a sinister and devious individual, and this whole time, Mil Mojitos, his friend, his longtime friend, has tried to stand by his side but he can turn a blind eye no longer. Mil Mojitos made it very clear that after the recent actions of Tiger Jade, uh, he, he simply cannot stand for this any longer, and he is going to try to do the, as a last resort, going to try to beat some sense into his mentor, the former Tiger Gold. Mil Mojitos is an extremely talented, extremely popular young man, and you know that this must be weighing heavily on his conscience that he must now face off against a man that he has held so much respect for. I have to think that the final straw for Mil Mojitos was uh, Tiger Jade's actions at um, full effect, where he disrespected and, and attacked and severely injured the legendary Snow, someone who Mil Mojitos has long looked up to, um, a, a legend in the world of, uh, of E-Fed Lucha Libre, and that was just a bridge too far for, uh, for Mil Mojitos. And he made it very clear that he has no desire to have this fight with his former mentor, but he sees no choice in the matter. Perhaps through ritualistic combat, something that the former Tiger Gold certainly uh, saw a lot of value in. Perhaps through, through this combat, he can somehow get through to the man beneath the mask. We shall see, as this match, which has frankly been a long time coming, um, uh, should, is, is getting ready to, to take place. Goodness gracious, look at the size of Tiger Jade. Um, you know, you have to think that Mil Mojitos... Um, Despite his many gifts, despite his speed and his agility, he's giving up almost a hundred pounds in this match. And would you look at that immediately? Tiger Jade with a Huracan Rana and just, just lays in the fists to the face of his former friend. He certainly is having no problem at all um, morally dealing with the, uh, with the repercussions of, of having to face off against his friend and student. Mojitos sends him to the ropes, a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder collision, and Mojitos comes in with a with, with just a beautiful kick right to the jaw, right to the mask of Tiger Jade. And another series of kicks and punches, and a beautiful release Northern Lights suplex. You can see here an aggression from Mil Mojitos that he has not often displayed here in NWC. You can just tell that this young man has been pushed to his absolute limit, and he, uh, he is doing what he feels he must. Tiger Jade rolling to the outside, trying to escape the onslaught of Mil Mojitos, but a flipping senton sends Mojitos over the top rope and takes out his former mentor. He is offering no quarter as he takes it to the legendary one. Series of punches and kicks and a beautiful flying knee shiver right to the side of the head. Oh, and would you look at that big time right hand and a 
backbreaker power slam on Mil Mojitos. It is not going to take too many uh, maneuvers to allow Tiger Gold, or I'm sorry, uh, the Tiger Jade to, uh, to to cut down and eliminate Mil Mojitos' uh, lead there. Mil Mojitos is going to need to land three or four blows for, for Tiger Gold's uh, every single one, given the power differential between these two men. Tiger sends him to the ropes. And Mojitos manages to work his way out. Goes for a quick pin. And Tiger Jade. I'm sorry, folks. I keep wanting to call him Tiger Gold. Um, years and years of history aren't allowing me f to forget. Oh, and would you look at that? Jade hung up in the ropes. And a double kick right to the chest. Mojitos to the top rope. And stomps both feet right into the soul of Tiger Jade. And Jade is out. And you know what? Perhaps it is time I, I, I abandon trying to refer to him. Wait a minute. What? Calling upon dark powers. Tiger Jade disappeared. The, the lights went out and he appeared suddenly behind Mil Mojitos. Goodness gracious, what kind of dark abilities is Tiger Jade drawing upon when he wears that mask? And just like that, that, uh, that, that lights out maneuver and a, a couple of hard punches have allowed uh, Tiger Jade to take control in this match. I, I thought that Milohitos was about to make short work of his former mentor, but goodness, would you look at that. Huge punch right to the solar plexus. And Tiger has him, lifts him up, gorilla press, and drops him with a power slam outside the mat. Folks, the, uh, the, the, the matting outside that ring is only a half inch thick, I need to remind you here. And that is solid concrete underneath. And what in the world? Tiger J just slams Milmojito's spine first on that barricade. Again, I, I, am, I am a little disgusted here at the level of viciousness that Jade is willing to throw at his, uh, at his former student here. Look at that, just smashing his head, shoulders, and spine into the ground, making no effort to, to, to cushion those blows at all. He is, he is out for blood. Perhaps Tiger Jade is insulted that Mojitos would dare defy him in this way. Jade has him up over the shoulder. A spinning tiger bomb. Goodness me. And what in the world? Tiger Jade is on the top rope. What's he going to do, ladies and gentlemen? He is measuring his man in a big shoulder block. A 300-pound shoulder block off the top rope. Mil Mojitos is in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Tiger Jade, oh, is he doing it, folks? Is he setting him up for the Tiger Hammer? It looks like he might be. Has Mojitos over his shoulders, and folks, this may be it. Tiger Hammer right in the center of the ring. Folks, that's all she wrote. Mojitos put up a great fight, but that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mil Mojitos has managed to kick out of the Tiger Hammer. He is still alive. What heart from this luchador? Tiger, uh, Tiger Jade, though, right up in the air again and just cracks his back over his shoulders. A Tiger Breaker. One, two, and unfortunately, Mil Mojitos is not able to kick out a second time. What heart, though, kicking out of a Tiger Hammer, and then, uh, but only to succumb in the end to a Tiger Breaker. Wow. I've got to say here, folks, I, I, am, I am disappointed at uh, Tiger Jade for just how viciously he went after his protege. And I, I don't know if any lessons were learned here, and I, I certainly hope that Mil Mojitos um, uh, is going to be okay. I hope he has not uh, sustained any, any long-term injuries there. He was dropped right on the top of his head. And Tiger Jade looking, looking vicious as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on to our next bout, and what an exciting contest this is. Paul Gravitt made tremendous waves in NWC last season, making it all the way to the main event of Full Effect, where he came within a hair's breadth of unseating Damian Black as the NWC World Champion. 
Uh, now Shade as well, a member of the Diners Club, managed to, at that same event with Chonk, win the INCW Tag Team Championships. These are two uh, superstars on the rise, and tonight they face each other in one-on-one -on -one action. Of course, both of these men interested in cementing their legacies here. Paul Gravitz still fairly new to the NWC. He, uh, he, he began in INCW during that promotion's last season and has seen nothing but success since moving to NWC. But still, despite that, he is a, a fairly uh, young competitor in the professional scene. He has years of amateur experience, but he has only been a professional wrestler for one season of INCW and one season of NWC. In that time, though, he has really made his mark, and he would love nothing more than to knock off one half of the tag team champions to, sh to continue that upward trajectory as he continues to reach for the stars and, and chase championship gold. And here, folks, we have the enigmatic Shade wearing his INCW tag team championship belt. And, folks, if I didn't know any better, I'd say the usually stoic and unflappable Shade it seems to be showing a little bit of life here. Uh, this is a little bit more like the Shade of old. I wonder if winning the INCW Tag Team Championships has, uh, has, has taken some of the burden he's put on himself off of his shoulders. He went through a very dark journey across multiple promotions, uh, exercising multiple demons, um, only to, to ascend to the top of our tag team division along with his compatriots in the Diners Club. Shade is a tremendous competitor, and we'll have to see if this new attitude here will uh, will allow him to continue his winning ways as he uh, as as he represents the INCW legacy as uh, as one half of the tag team champions of the organization that he spent so many years in. This should be an amazing bout: two conflicting styles, uh, technique versus speed. Shade, starting out uh, fast, goes for a knee shiver, but does not go the way that he wants it to. Paul Gravitt with a with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex and manages a quick, unexpected two-count right out the gate. Leverage hip toss, followed by an elbow drop, uh, targeting the left arm of the enigmatic one. Gravitt has Shade by the back of the head. What's he going to do, ladies and gentlemen? Sends him to the ropes. Goes for, a, goes for a grab, but Shade able to evade, but he can't evade that hip toss, though. Shade with a kick. Comes off the ropes. Beautiful, flipping, Spanish fly-like maneuver onto Paul Gravitt. Oh, and look at that. Vicious headbutt takes Shade down. Shade going to take a powder. But that does not do him any good as Gravit comes in with a blasting shoulder block. Folks, I am so happy to be here to, with you this evening. Um, as, uh, 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 as, as hopefully all of you are, are finishing up your, your Christmas and holiday feasts, hopefully there's been some presents exchanged, some good cheer had by all, and now you can finish your night with, uh, with some tremendous professional wrestling action. Uh, this is the NWC's first Christmas broadcast um, as we celebrate uh, closing out the year of 2023 the only way that we can, and that is with stellar in-ring wrestling action. Gravit with another leverage-based hip toss goes right back to that left arm. Daring Shade to stand. Gravit firing on all cylinders here. Oh, and what's he going to do, folks? Has him up and just drops him shoulder first on his own left knee. And look at this Gravit launching Shade across the ring. So far, folks, this has been all Paul Gravit. Gravit using every bit of his strength, every bit of his leverage. Of course, Shade rarely the largest dog in any fight that he's in. He is not a large man. Yeah, he, he makes his way with his intensity and with his speed and agility. Uh, but uh, he's he, but he's going to have to to pull out every trick in his arsenal in order to. Oh my goodness! Look at that shade trying to do just that. A flying shoulder block, but completely misses the mark. 
I'll tell you folks, Gravit is is uh, is uh, in danger here of, of running away with this thing. He is just beating Shade pillar to post. But would you look at that? Oh my goodness! Tremendous reversal into a stunner by Shade. If he's going to try to change his fortunes around, that is a great way to start. Shade with a forearm to the kidneys and picks Gravit up and back breaker outside the ring and just like that the uh, the the enigmatic member of the diners club has taken control arguably for the first time in this match it sends gravit into the center of the ring while he tries to uh, while shade tries to regroup a little bit definitely favoring that leg using his quickness to stay out of the reach of gravit inside outside keeping Gravit off his toes, manages to parlay that into throwing him into the ropes, but Gravit coming back, nothing f pretty about that, a headbutt to the back of the, of, the, of the noggin there, and just heaves Shade away, and look at that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the half-crab, Paul Gravit, if he can sit down on that, Shade is in tremendous trouble here, but Shade is also very near those ropes, I don't know if he realized it, is he going to be able to grab those ropes? No, instead he picks a foot, is able to pull Gravit down, but look at that, Gravit ducks under a punch, and folks, that is the Gravit just grinding the side of Shade's head against his forearm. Folks, he has finished many, many matches with this maneuver. Shade may be forced to tap. Shade fighting it, though, fighting with every fiber. It was being tremendous strength by Shade. Spine buster forces Paul Gravit to let him go. And Shade is, oh my goodness, a flipping Spanish fly-like maneuver. What in the world? Shade, a tremendous talent, just, just taking Paul Gravit to task. At this point, folks, I would say it is anybody's game. Shade picking a spot. What is he going to do? Shade to the top rope. Comes off with a tremendous macho style elbow right to the kidneys of Paul Gravit. Series of strikes sends the big man reeling. And now he goes to work again on that left arm. And, and wow, would you look at that? Nobody throws kicks like Shade does. And Shade is now feeling it as he has slowly managed to pull ahead in this match. This is really the first time that he's had some sustained offense. And would you look at that beautiful spinning kick. Gravit may be out, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, and Paul Gravit kicks out. What heart and what strength. Gravit comes back with a punch. He's got Shade up and just spikes him head first in the mat. And what is he doing? Paul Gravit here. He is stalking his man. And he's got him cinched in. Is he going to fall down into? Yes, the Gravit one more time. He's got Shade. But this time, folks, this time it looks like Shade did not allow him to fully cinch it in. Another quick spine buster forces him out of the maneuver. Shade is still alive. Gravit elbowing him, though. Has Shade up over his shoulders. Drops him face first on that top turnbuckle and begins putting the boots to him. But Shade able to do a quick reversal and a big-time spear right in the middle of the ring. Goes for the pin. One, two, folks. Shade, one half of the INCW Tag Team Champions, has scored a rare singles in over Paul Gravit. What a fantastic match. Gravit brought everything, every one of his skills to bear here. Shade answered in kind, and on this night, on the last edition of NWC Tonight of 2023, your winner, the veteran of INCW, the uh, enigmatic member of the Diners Club, one half of the INCW Tag Team Champions, Shade. Absolutely amazing contest, folks. Bright, bright futures for both of these young men.
And now, folks, we have an exhibition match featuring none other than Damian Black, our reigning, defending NWC World Champion. And he will be taking on a, an old rival of his, Richard Pennyworth III, someone who was at one time employed at, uh, in PWA, uh, owned by, of course, Damian Black. Richard Pennyworth, in fact, one of the head financers of PWA in its initial offering. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Richard Pennyworth has seen better days. Uh, but he came back to NWC after taking a hiatus from professional wrestling for a number of years, uh, working on many of his financial ventures. He is, of course, the owner of a Fortune 500 company, a fabulously wealthy man who uh, who began wrestling as a as a as secondary pursuit, just an attempt to to um, uh, increase his portfolio, as they say. Saw some tremendous success in PWA, uh, earning himself a world championship there. But uh, ever since coming back into the limelight, he has been struggling to get a victory. Unfortunately, he was in the unenviable position of being the only man in the NWC world title number one contender tournament to not score a victory. He has been, uh, been, been ever since then, after that elusive win... He spent the entire time between seasons here training uh, with the very, very best that money can buy, and perhaps he will find some success here uh, as he takes on the world champion, his old rival, his old employer, Damian Black. Now, of course, Damian Black, a man who needs no introduction, he has been representing NWC as its world champion since before NWC Tonight uh, aired its first uh, its first match. He earned that title while in INCW. Uh, he is, of course, the former, well, the proprietor of the Prestige Wrestling Association, currently on hiatus, um, and he has professed with the other members of his group Pantheon to believe in the the best of old school tradition in professional wrestling. He aspires to uh, to be the man who upholds the standard, uh, the legacy, the history of professional wrestling, and he lives, eats, and breathes uh, this sport. And he has been a tremendous representative of NWC holding that world title proudly, defending it successfully at NWC's first pay-per-view, full effect, against Paul Gravitt after a lengthy uh, 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 tournament to determine the new number one contender. How will he fare against his old rival, Richard Pennyworth? Referee has rung the bell, and we are underway. Now, of course, um, it, it, uh, in addition to Richard Pennyworth having had a bit of a rough go, uh, to be honest, Damian Black had a bit of a rough go recently as well. The last time he was in an NWC ring, despite the fact that he is holding that championship proudly, um, he was in a situation in which, well, uh, I, I'll say um, some would argue a questionable referee call resulted in him suffering his first singles loss in quite some time. So certainly Damian Black has uh, what he would consider to be uh, some, uh, something to prove. A rarity for a person um, with, with this pedigree, with this history. Uh, it has been years since Damian Black had anything to prove, but he does need to live down this controversial loss that he suffered just a couple of weeks ago. Of course, tonight he's going against a person who has suffered nothing but losses for this past season, so perhaps Damian Black is feeling some confidence here. But could you imagine what that would do to the ego of Damian Black if Richard Pennyworth were to earn his first victory in an NWC ring by giving Damian Black his second consecutive defeat? Pennyworth showing quite a lot of aggression in this match so far. Beautiful drop kick. I've always said it. Richard Pennyworth delivers the best drop kick in the business. And a European uppercut takes Damian Black down. Black looking to regroup a little bit. And folks, um, I don't know if I was doing this match a service. Pennyworth, oh goodness, Pennyworth just eating a knee there, letting his momentum uh, uh, betray him there. I don't know that I was doing a, a service to this match in the early goings. Richard Pennyworth came into this thing tremendously aggressive and, uh, and really accounted for himself extremely well. Perhaps the familiarity of facing off against Damian Black again for the first time in so many years 
um, is is allowing him to tap into uh, parts of his repertoire that he uh, uh, has not been able to access lately. Beautiful double arm suplex to Damian Black. And a single arm suplex as well. Never let it be said that Richard Pennyworth does not have tremendous skills. He is a classically trained, uh, the best money could buy, some might argue, a classically trained grappler with years and years of experience. In fact, one could make the argument that Richard Pennyworth could be considered one of the all-time greats if he could only focus. Richard Pennyworth is an independent multi-millionaire, of course, the owner of, of multiple companies, uh, multiple um, uh, uh, franchises around the world, and he has constantly uh, been forced to divide his time between all of these ventures. Oh, would you look at that! A forearm right to the forehead of Richard Pennyworth, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that has busted the uh, the blue blood open. And let's see here. Black has him up, spine first into the top turnbuckle, and he goes for a pin. One, two, and a kick out by Richard Pennyworth the third. Uh, he is what you'd call old money, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when I say he's a self-made millionaire, I mean that on his own he has grown his fortunes tremendously. Uh, but uh, never let it be said, uh, you know, that, uh, that 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 he didn't come with a silver spoon in his mouth. But to his credit, Richard Pennyworth. Uh, at a young age, went out on his own, rejecting his family's fortune, and earned his first million completely by himself. He is now, of course, in the top 1%, uh, one, of the, one of the richest men in America. Not that it's doing him a tremendous amount of good right now. Pennyworth floats over! Inverted DDT outside the ring! I will say this, Richard Pennyworth is accounting for himself extremely well out here. I would say these two have been pretty evenly matched here in this map, in, in, in this bout so far. And, oh, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe, folks, I... Folks, the referee has rung the bell. He is claiming that both of these men have been counted out. I, I, I certainly don't think that the count had gotten that far yet. Folks, I, I, I'm i very confused here. The referee rang the bell. He is saying this is a double count out. Wow. Um, I, I don't know what to make of this, folks. Richard Pennyworth certainly is, is happy with this outcome. This match was just getting started, but now officially uh, Richard Pennyworth is now, uh, ha he has something to his credit that is not a loss he has fought Damian Black to a double count out. Ah, this cannot be something that Damian Black is going to be particularly happy with. Damian Black went for a loss last week, uh, and now a double count out this week. Uh, the world champion has been having some bad luck here, but I've got to say the the referee seems to be um seems to be uh, a little bit suspect. We're going to have to investigate that. As uh, 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 but, but for now, folks, we must move on to our next bout. We have Victoria Prime taking on Megan. Now, folks, we're going to need a bit of backstory here for this match. Let's start by talking a bit about Victoria Prime. Now, this young lady came onto the scene here in NWC last season and really made a mark for herself. I've used that term a lot lately. We have the Make Your Mark Battle Royal. Uh, so far, NWC in general has been all about men and women finding a way to stand out and showcase the best of the best in professional wrestling. And Victoria Prime has managed to do that uh, in many ways. She uh, ha she goes by the moniker Peerless Victoria Prime. That's what she went by back in BPW. Um, but uh, she has taken on a new moniker. She now calls herself the undefeated Victoria Prime. And, of course, that is the truth. She has not been pinned, not been submitted in singles competition, and she looks to continue her winning ways as she inches ever closer to what uh, what she is hoping will be a championship opportunity at some point in the future. The undefeated one, ready in the ring for her competition. And now, as far as the woman that she is facing, ladies and gentlemen, this is Megan. Uh, we saw her with this look 
in the Make Your Mark Battle Royal. Those of you who have our longtime viewers of INCW may recall Megan. Um, she was saddled with what can only be described as the worst gimmick in the history of professional wrestling. In fact, it's one whose details I will not go into here. Um, INCW archives are available if you want to see them. But she has tried to leave that gimmick behind and is doing her best to reinvent herself here in NWC, simply going by the moniker Megan. Uh, dropping her um, her last name that she was going with uh, back in INCW. This should be a tremendous bout, ladies and gentlemen. Victoria Prime uh, has been doing just absolutely amazing ever since she began here in NWC. Megan, with a lot to prove and a chip on her shoulder, a very motivated duo here uh, in this in this contest. Immediately, Victoria Prime coming in with a leg lock, taking down Megan and and trying to to slow the pace of this match. Megan is going to want to move quickly to uh, to offset the power and precision of Victoria Prime with her uh, with her own quickness and ferocity. Megan has been known for her speed, for her kicks, uh, and for that vicious DDT that she likes to finish her matches with. Look at that. Flipping a, a, a beautiful maneuver there, a, a, a destroyer-style maneuver. Uh, just really taking Victoria down. And putting the boots to the peerless one, the, the undefeated Victoria Prime. But look at that! Power to bear! And a sit-out powerbomb, just like that. Just a tremendous clothesline right into the corner, followed by that powerbomb here. Victoria Prime showing the the absolutely uh, uh, jaw-dropping strength that she brings into that ring. And look at that. Victoria Prime, also a fan of the opportunistic shortcut, clipping the leg out from underneath Megan. And continuing the assault on the lower extremities there, a stomp and twisting that foot there. She's trying to take the wheels out from underneath this high flyer. And look at the disrespect by the peerless one. Big time chop goes around behind and a release German suplex. Megan, though, not done yet, kicks Victoria Prime away and begins to go to work on a limb of her own. Oh, very creative maneuver to take down Victoria Prime, bouncing her head off the mat after cranking that arm. Not quite a one count yet, though. Oh, a, a foot straight to the nose of Victoria Prime. And a running drop kick. And immediately going to some punches here. Uh, Megan is, is not playing around. She wants to ascend here in the NWC women's division. And she does not care what it takes to... to to erase the bad taste in the mouths of the NWC Nation over her previous gimmick. Megan uh, just attacking relentlessly the shoulder of, uh, of Victoria Prime. Victoria Prime definitely uh, did not see this coming. I don't know if she was fully prepared for the ferocity of, of Megan. But again, a solid hammer blow takes Megan down and in the corner, Victoria just drops her like a sack of potatoes and begins choking Megan in the corner with her foot. And goes to work on that shoulder one more time. Victoria Prime uh, beginning to feel in control and confident again, and the people's right takes down Megan, goes for the pin. And Megan able to get a shoulder up at the last moment. Face buster. And what is this here? Parliamentary procedure, ladies and gentlemen. Victoria Prime has won many a match with that maneuver. Megan, this time, her foot just close enough to the ropes to force a break. Goes up to the top. Picture perfect savage elbow right into the kidneys of Megan. Follows it up with a kick. And waving to her just the disrespect shown by Victoria Prime. She knows that she comes into this ring with a pedigree and has very little respect for the commoners that she's facing. And look at this, taking a moment to preen like a peacock to the NWC nation. 
That may uh, that may come back to haunt her, though. Big drop kick to the spine of Megan. And Victoria Prime just unloads with a series of kicks and just walks right over her competition. Folks, uh, Victoria Prime, of course, I'm sure she would love nothing more than a shot at the INCW Women's Championship currently held by Anna Sokolov. Um, matches like this will go a long way for convincing the championship committee that she deserves a shot like that. Look at that parliamentary procedure a second time, really cranking back. And Megan is forced to tap out a decisive victory from the undefeated Victoria Prime as she continues her march toward glory for queen and country, as they say. A very, very impressive maneuver. Very impressive match by Victoria Prime. Uh, while she is not yet the number one contender to the INCW Women's Championship, you have to think that her name has to be in that conversation. Um, it'll, of course, all depend on who is holding that women's championship come the end of tonight's broadcast. Of course, Evelyn Sin facing Anna Sokolov in a two out of three falls match for that very title in our main event this evening. Excellent work, though, by Victoria Prime. And now, from excellence to something else entirely, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here we have a match that Vinny Durango requested, and for some reason, uh, the NWC has acquiesced to. Folks, Scrapper Joe, um, last week at uh, uh, NWC Tonight, beat Firewall to become the number one contender to the B.I.G. Championship. Vinny Durango's personal property, the bona fide Internet Grand Championship. Um... How he did that is anybody's guess. As far as who Scrapper Joe is, the less said the better. KB Chronic, uh, the, of course, esteemed uh, owner of INCW, a member of our championship committee, um, vouched for this, uh, this, this unknown man to come into this ring and get a shot at, uh, at uh, getting a, a, a title opportunity for Vinny Durango's belt. I believe the whole thing was a giant rib on Vinny, but um, wonders will never cease Scrapper Joe beat Firewall. Now Vinny Durango is saying he's sending the troops out to, uh, to to test the metal of Scrapper Joe. And by the troops, I mean Tigger Gold. Uh, Tigger Gold, or Lil T, as he's known uh, to Vinny Durango, is, is, is Vinny's personal uh, manservant, you could say. Um, he is... Um, he does Vinny Durango's bidding at the, uh, at, at the most basic level. And you can see here the fact that he has sent Tigger Gold out to take on Scrapper Joe tells you just how much respect Vinny Durango has for this um, this gentleman. Now, as far as where Scrapper Joe came from, uh, there were jokes last week about him fighting uh, uh, for, for, for a sandwich. Um, uh, whether that's true or not, when he got into the ring, we found out that Scrapper Joe does, in fact, possess some some fairly impressive wrestling skills. It was enough to get past the um, the unknown quantity that is Firewall, but was that a fluke? Um, does Vinny Durango have something to worry about as he prepares for his inevitable title defense against Scrapper Joe? Only time will tell, but certainly we will get a better measure of Scrapper Joe's medal here uh, in how he does against Tigger Gold. Now, as far as who Tigger Gold is and what his history is here in NWC, poof, boy, that's a story for another time. Uh, suffice it to say, he, he started out as a parody of Tiger Gold um, and, and has since evolved into something else entirely, um, all to the amusement of Vinnie Durango. We shall see um, what occurs here in this match. And, folks, it's a holiday special. Uh, I suggest you just have fun and roll with it. Perhaps if you've had a few eggnogs, that will uh, make this match go down a little bit smoother. Referee has rung the bell, and immediately... Oh, oh goodness. Immediately, Scrapper Joe uh, collides into Tigger Gold and begins just, just beating the tar out of the masked uh, marauder. Big knee to the side of uh, of the diminutive Tigger Gold, and and Scrapper Joe is going to the top rope. What's going on here? Big knee drop right to the chest. Goes for a pin just like that, folks. This is it already. One, two. Tigger Gold manages to get a shoulder up, 
And what is going on here? Oh, big stomp. I think that might have been below the belt, folks. And a kick right to the kidneys as well. He is just... Oh, th this is not pretty, ladies and gentlemen. Scrapper Joe is just... Is, is beating Ticker Gold like he owes him money. Gold manages to, 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 to kick him away, but... Oh, eats a knee right into his sizable bread basket. Oh, but Gold fighting back, but... Oh, no, no. Scrapper Joe... Utilizing those skills learned on the streets, one can only assume. Big forearm using the bone of that elbow to just to light up Tigger Gold. And a big flying knee right to the jaw. I, I think that might be it. One, two, and Tigger Gold, to his credit, manages to kick out. But Vinny Durango may have something to worry about here. This, this, this vicious... Um, uh, unhoused gentleman is, uh, is 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 absolutely beating the stuffing out of his little buddy. Scrapper Joe on the top row, poised, big double axe handle inside the ring to the outside. Clearly, this man, whoever he is, wherever he came from, has wrestling experience. Outside the ring, just, oh my, I don't know how long it's been since those pants have been washed. I, I wouldn't wish having those legs wrapped around anyone's head. Scrapper, oh goodness, Scrapper Joe just, just taking it to Tigger Gold. Folks, wh can the referee stop this match? This is, this is, this is getting a little bit disgusting. Oh, knee to the side of the head. This is a mugging, ladies and gentlemen. A mugging on 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 Christmas. Uh, I apologize. I apologize. If you have children at home, you might want to have them avert their eyes. This is just this is just an unfortunate situation. Big punch takes Tigger Gold down. One, two, and mercifully he stays down. Scrapper Joe did not come to play. Scrapper Joe came to earn that sandwich, and he. Did it by... Uh, can we get some medical attention for Ticker Gold? Uh, Vinny Durango, um, regarding your title, I, I I, I, would say show up ready to fight. Scrapper Joe, I don't know where he came from, but this man is ready to... Uh, to well, he's ready. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say that much. He's ready. Uh, folks, plenty more action coming in this very special edition of NWC tonight. Uh... Hopefully something that will get the taste of this match out of our mouths. And would you look at this, ladies and gentlemen? What better way to, uh, to, to, to get the taste of that out of our mouths than with championship on the line? Look at this here. It is Reckless Love, the reigning defending PWA tag team champions, taking on the team that managed to get by them last week in order to earn this shot. Um, Chris Knight and Danica Rabin. Uh, this is this is for the gold, folks. Uh, in PWA and INCW Tag Team Championship matches, it is single fall, but this gold is on the line. These titles have been proudly held by the likes of Alpha Omega, Armageddon, um, and many, many other illum luminaries of, uh, of PWA. They have been uh, proudly paraded around with by Reckless Love for a few weeks, um, although some have questioned uh, how worthy they are of holding those championships given the fact that they have, have suffered many singles losses over the course of this last season. Reckless Love with something to prove, and uh, Danica Rabin and Chris Knight, two young up-and-coming stars with everything to gain and a lot to prove themselves here. They are coming off of a tremendous last season um, at INC, or I'm sorry, at PWA. Huh, I, I am I am tongue tied, ladies and gentlemen. At uh, NWC Full Effect, Danica Rabin uh, defeated Alyssa Wild in just the most vicious steel cage match that we have seen in years, and Chris Knight managed to earn a number one con uh, contenders match. Uh, earn a shot against Derek Arzon's light heavyweight championship by defeating uh, three other worthy competitors. These two are, are stars on the rise. And can they add the PWA Tag Team Championships 
to their uh, already impressive series of accolades? Only time will tell. And ladies and gentlemen, heading down to the ringside area, we have the reigning, defending PWA Tag Team Champions of the World, Reckless Love. These two, uh, they are they are loud, they are obnoxious, but never let it be said that they are not skilled. This husband and wife duo excels at making the most of their tag team encounters. Uh, yes, Titus has dropped a few singles matches. Yes, Cynthia Love um, has has dropped a few matches in our women's division. But as a unit, as a duo, they have not been defeated in NWC, with the exception of last week, where Chris Knight and Danica Rabin managed to defeat them to earn this title shot. And I'll tell you, these two have been have been requesting the spotlight for quite some time. They wanted their titles showcased here in NWC, and they are getting their wish. This should be an absolutely tremendous encounter between four amazing competitors. Referee has rung the bell, and we are underway. Cynthia Love, with a satellite head scissors out the gate, sends Danica Rabin careening to the ground. Kick to the stomach, and a big-time dropkick. Cynthia is coming in hot. And tags out to her loyal, faithful husband, which of course means that Chris Knight is also getting in the ring. Oh, attempted uh, axe kick there. Chris Knight, though, follows up with a beautiful headbutt. Titus Love, of course, a, a tremendous amateur competitor, um, operating at the collegiate level for a number of years, won a number of regional and state championships. Chris Knight... Um, a a catches catch can wrestler uh, who who earned his wings on the Indies after training at the Wild Academy. This should be a tremendous melding of styles here. Titus taking a moment to to uh, to to play to the crowd, ill advised when taking on an absolute workhorse, an absolute machine like Chris Knight. Knight tags out to Raven. Which means, of course, Cynthia is back in. The men fight the men, the women fight the women in NWC mixed intergender tag team matches. Cynthia going to take a moment to try to... Uh, oh my goodness! Oh! Suckers Danica in as Danica flies over the top rope. Big time kick sends Raven to, to, the, to the mat. And Cynthia doing extremely well routing uh, Danica Rabin. Now, this, of course, is not the Phantom Queen version of Danica, uh, but Danica is dangerous in any form she chooses to appear in. Cynthia sent back into the ring. Series of kicks. Beautiful combination by Danica Rabin, and she... Stomps the back of the head, almost a curb stomp, goes for the pin. One, only a one count so far on Cynthia Love. Again, I remind you folks, the titles are on the line. Reckless Love is going to be face fighting extremely hard here. And look at that, grounds Chris Knight, pulls him into a cross face. Beautiful amateur style skills by Titus Love. Oh, I believe that was a rake to the eyes, ladies and gentlemen. And Love manages to elbow out, preventing Chris Knight from gaining an advantage. Big cross chop takes Chris Knight down, but Knight fires back with a kick. Sends Titus to the ropes. Shoulder to shoulder collision. Titus sends Chris to the ropes, and a kitchen sink knee right to the abdominal area. Inside out German suplex to Chris Knight. Titus Love showing off his tremendous amateur skill. And what's he going to do, folks? He's on top. He's on that top turnbuckle. Big time flying crossbody goes for the pin. One and just a one count. But you can see here, Reckless Love did not take these two lightly. And look at that, folks. 
Will death do us part? That triangle lock. If he can manage to straighten his arm out. But no, Danica able to get in there and break up the count. Titus has Chris Knight up, but Knight able to hip toss his way out of it. Beautiful amateur defense there. And Titus again. But no, Knight able to arm drag his way out of this one. Tremendous action here. Amazing reversals by these two here. And look at that. Oh, attempted dragon catcher, but but uh, Titus Love able to fight his way out of that. Move for move, hold for hold. These two men, I would like to see these two in a singles match uh, based on, on what I'm seeing here. Tremendous potential here. Dragon screw leg whip on Danica Rabin. So far, Danica has not yet been able to figure out uh, a formula for taking out the uh, the offense of Cynthia Love. Sends Rabin to the ropes. Misses her on the way back, though. And what's this here? A capture suplex on Danica Rabin. Reckless Love is in charge of this match at the moment, folks. And what is Cynthia going to do? Takes a run at her and just spears her off the apron. Danica Rabin is in trouble. She's going to need to 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 really reevaluate how she's how she's approaching this match. Rabin sent into the corner, elbows her way out though, and Cynthia returns the favor. Shot to the back and a second one by Cynthia Love and just starts pounding her head on the mat. But Raven still in this, sweeps the leg and DDT just spikes the diminutive Cynthia Love's head off the mat. These two are giving as well as they get. Oh my goodness. Nearly a three count. Cynthia showing some frustration, not yet able to put Danica away. A pair of kicks right to the lower back area. Danica going to need to make that tag. Cynthia tries to stop her, but does not make it there in time. Chris Knight is in the ring. But Titus right there to meet him with a beautiful head scissors takedown. Knight though, back. Knees to the back. He calls that one the gambit. And Cynthia there to break up the hold. Knight's gambit managed to earn Chris Knight a, uh, a number one contendership to the light heavyweight championship. Tremendously effective submission maneuver. Reversal and a second reversal. And Danica up with a beautiful slam on Cynthia Love and Cynthia is going to try to put some distance between her and Raven but Raven is preparing for something here what's she going to do folks what's she going to do over the top big time splash onto one half of the PWA tag team champions and continues to take the fight to Cynthia outside oh but Cynthia goes to the eyes and escapes back to the confines of the ring Manages to catch Rabin. Sends her to the corner. What's she going to do? Repositioning Rabin. Can't quite decide how she wants to handle this. What's, what is she going for there? Oh, there we go. Slams her shoulder first into the turnbuckle. But cannot press the advantage. Rabin, using her speed, using her quickness, drop kick to the face. And she is going to tag back out again. The men are back in the match. Big time flying forearm to Titus Love. And Chris Knight is saying that he is ready to take this to the next level. Running drop kick. Basement style drop kick right to the head and shoulders of Titus Love. Oh, going for a cross chop. But Love able to, to reverse the momentum. Got both arms double. Underhook release suplex on Chris Knight who appears to be out. 
And Love is working Chris Knight back toward his corner. Slams him headfirst in the turnbuckle, and I believe that may have busted Knight open. Dragon screw leg whip holds on, holds on, and just cranking on that ankle. Titus Love tagging out to his bride, his wife, the lovely, but uh, but but deadly, Cynthia Love. And look at that! Octopus hold into a... Oh my goodness, look at that! Pinning combination, one, two! And that was just about it, ladies and gentlemen. Tremendous maneuver from Danica. And what's she going to do, folks? What is this? Death bird splash from the top rope. Goes for the pin. One, two. Knight able to cut off Love. And that is it. Chris Knight and Danica Rabin. A heads-up maneuver by, by Chris Knight cutting off the, uh, the attempted save by Titus Love. We have new tag team champions, ladies and gentlemen. Danica Rabin. And Chris Knight on the final NWC Tonight broadcast of 2023 have taken, have won, have wrested the titles from Reckless Love. They are your new PWA Tag Team Champions. Absolutely fantastic action. Look at them. They are they, they cannot even believe that they have achieved this, folks. This is Danica Rabin and Chris Knight's first gold here in in NWC, they are now uh, they are now the proud holders of the PWA Tag Team Championships. Goodness, what a tremendous match! And ladies and gentlemen, uh, speaking of tremendous matches, we are about to see uh, a fantastic encounter here. Our very next encounter, our next match here, is a street fight between Spencer Watts and Chonk. This is a blood feud that has really escalated over the last few weeks here, all stemming from um, actions that happened in the in the championship tournament last season. And folks, our competitors are already backstage, and this battle is underway. This is not a sanctioned match, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fight. Last week on our forums, Spencer Watts challenged Chonk to meet him in the parking area because he wanted to, to get some revenge for Chonk attacking him from behind and costing him his match against Akira Wild last week. And of course, Chonk responded by saying that the whole reason he attacked Spencer Watts is because during the the championship tournament that they were both involved in, Watts uh, attacked um, uh, Chonk with a low blow. Uh, so there is bad blood on both sides, although I might make the argument that as a member of the Diners Club, uh, Chonk has been a part of several very unsavory actions. So uh, perhaps Spencer Watts was simply trying to even the playing field. Oh, would you look at that big kick right to the face of Spencer Watts, who was attempting to bring a chair into the mix. Spencer Watts giving up over a foot in height, and over a hundred pounds in weight here as Chonk just sends him careening across the parking lot area. Picks him up and throws him spine first on that concrete. This is not going to be pretty, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Spencer Watts trying to take Chonk's leg out from underneath him, but Chonk not moving. And now just, just stomping the heck out of the blueprint. We have Chong with a baseball bat, but unable to utilize it. DDT right on top of those crates and equipment there. And a chair in the hands of Spencer Watts starts hammering Chong on the knee, on the torso. But Chong manages to throw Spencer Watts over his shoulder. And folks, though they are on those crates up there, those do not have a lot of give. This back and forth brawl, DDT right on that sound equipment. Goodness me. And a kendo stick. What in the world is a kendo stick doing back there? Series of punches. And look at this here. Chonk is bleeding. Chonk is, is bleeding openly from a wound on the top of his head. Blood loss could be a factor as this match continues. Baseball bat shot right to the dome. But Spencer still fighting his way back. A, a true pit bull in the ring. And sends Chonk right there, stomach first, onto that chair. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, and just a slap by Chonk saying, "I ah, you you can't outpower me, little man." Big super kick takes Chonk down, bouncing his head off of that chair there. Watts definitely getting psyched up. And again, folks, this match will not end with a pinfall. This match will end when someone is beat up to the point that they can't continue. And Chonk with a chair shot uh, telling the audience that this is that's going to happen sooner rather than later. We still look forward to the opportunity to see these two in a an officially sanctioned match they've only fought one time before in nwc history and that is last season again a big paintbrush slap to spencer watts and oh big time suplex i think he was trying to land him on that chair oh my goodness how much more damage can spencer watts take oh at least a little bit more one two and oh, f folks, I, I think Spencer Watts may have may have dislocated the shoulder of Chonk. Chonk is is well, he's spasming a bit, ladies and gentlemen. I I think that that shot there, that final chair shot, may have dislocated the shoulder of Chonk there. Chonk fighting literally one armed here. That is that is that is an ugly looking wound. Okay, it looks as if Chonk has managed to pop that back in the socket. That was that was grotesque, ladies and gentlemen. Muscle spasms. Terrible thing. And Chonk with a chair. And right to the back of the leg. And to the foot of Spencer Watts. Taking the locomotion out from underneath the blueprint. Watts attempting to kick back. Ricochets his Chonk's back off of the edge of that table there. Oh, and just bounced Chonk's head off of that table as he was sent flying backwards. How much more damage can these two take? This has been a vicious match. Oh, oh, goodness. An iron claw has taken Spencer Watts out of this fight. Wow, that was sudden. The tremendous iron grip of Chonk has taken Spencer Watts down. Your winner of this, uh, of this unsanctioned brawl chonk and you know that's that, that's not going to sit well with spencer watts again we look forward to seeing these two in a in, a, in an nwc ring very soon but what tremendous action here we've seen so far this evening but we're not done yet ladies and gentlemen this special holiday edition of nwc tonight is going to keep on chugging and our next bout is a doozy Folks, we're going to see the new, newly debuted Wrestler X. He's only had one match under the NWC banner. We don't know much about this masked man, but he's going to get a chance to show his wares as he faces Gorgon Ramsey, the current reigning, defending INCW champion, in a single fall exhibition match. Now, folks, the last time we had an exhibition championship match, it was Danica Rabin and... Um, and Chris Knight taking on Reckless Love last week. And the fact that they beat those champions uh, earned them a shot at the PWA Tag Team Championships. And as we just saw, they made the most of that, of that opportunity. Could Wrestler X score a decisive and meaningful pinfall or submission over Gorgon Ramsey? And if he does so, could that put him in line for a title shot um, uh, t for the INCW Championship. Stranger things have happened, folks. Um, from what little we saw of Wrestler X last week, he is a, a tremendously skilled individual, um, a submission master, and it, it, his, his identity, while unknown, um, after seeing some of his key maneuvers, I've got to say, just as a broadcast journalist, I have my suspicions. I'll keep them to myself for now, but is it possible that Wrestler X... Um, is somebody that we have seen before in one of our uh, one of our uh, affiliate promotions? Well, you be the judge, ladies and gentlemen. See how he does tonight against Gorgon Ramsey. And of course, Gorgon Ramsey, uh, what a journey this man has had in INCW. He was a tremendous fan favorite, but uh, uh, after taking a sabbatical from from INCW active competition after after coming 
right to the edge of winning the INCW Championship in a main event super card match against Akira Wild. Uh, after falling short, he took some time off, traveled the world, honed his skills, came back as a member of the uh, of the morally questionable Diners Club, came back with a whole new attitude, and look at him now. He is not only the reigning and defending INCW champion, he also is the man who is in possession of the Diners Club meal ticket, a briefcase that contains a contract giving him the opportunity to face any champion on any date for their title. He was able to win the INCW Championship without cashing in the Diners Club meals ticket, which means that he is the most advantageous champion uh, currently on our roster. He's got a title, and in a moment's notice, he could use that uh, that that briefcase to to uh, regain a lost title in an instant impromptu rematch. The the possibilities are endless. Wrestler X taking it to Gorgon Ramsey. Has him up. Single arm suplex. Beautiful technique. I'm going to be watching Wrestler X very carefully. He is um, he is a a a, a gentleman who who um, he's a man of mystery, but his his skill set his maneuvers are strangely familiar. Perhaps if you were a long time viewer of some of our affiliate programs, uh, you're seeing the same things that I'm seeing. Beautiful arm drag. Mexican style arm drag goes for a pin. One, two, and Gorgon Ramsey gets his shoulder up. Uh, Wrestler X, regardless of who he is, he's going to have to 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 work extremely hard to interrupt the momentum of the Mad Chef. Big stomp to the back of the arm of the INCW champion. Attempted senton catches nothing but air. Gorgon moves out of the way. And is using that as an opportunity to regain control, torquing that leg in, in uncomfortable angles. And sending Wrestler X face first into that barricade and just a disrespectful slap. Gorgon Ramsey absolutely making the most of the environment around him. And Wrestler X, while obviously very, very skilled, um, is still falling prey to some of the dirty tactics that got Gorgon Ramsey. Uh, as as far as he has uh, here in NWC. Ramsey has Wrestler X up. Sends him back into the ring where he can finish this match. And Ramsey, look at him there. Look at him celebrating perhaps prematurely to the crowd. Ramsey has him up. Using those educated hands and feet. A beautiful release Northern Lights suplex. And he is going to the top rope. Goes for a knee drop, but manages to catch nothing but Matt. That knee just bounced off that canvas. And a sit-out short powerbomb goes for the pin. One, two. Ramsey able to get his shoulder up. Still a lot of fight left in the INCW champion. But look at this. Wrestler X with some joint manipulation. Stomps on the back of the shoulder of Gorgon Ramsey. And begins driving him into the corner. And look at that. Beautiful capture suplex. Sends Ramsey flying across the ring. The INCW champion is in a little bit of trouble, folks. And would you look at that beautiful submission hold there. Interesting Interesting choice of maneuvers by the masked man. Ramsey definitely favoring that leg now. It all started when Ramsey took that um, that ill-advised knee drop to the canvas, completely missing the uh, missing wrestler X, and and that injury has been exacerbated by a series of uh, of deft maneuvers by wrestler X. But Ramsey, uh, not done by a long shot. Big punch spins him around, and look at that, folks. Just like that, just like that, the calamari lock, but a heads-up Wrestler X able to reach out with his foot and grab that rope. 
half and half suplex just ricochets Wrestler X's head off of the mat and Gorgon Ramsey is feeling it. Are we going to see the chef's kiss, ladies and gentlemen? Big time chef's kiss takes Wrestler X down and Ramsey doesn't go for the pin. He is stalking him. Are we going to see the calamari lock again? No, Wrestler X able to elbow his way out. Big time head scissors takes Ramsey down and now he is stalking Gorgon Ramsey. Wrestler X, what is he going to do? Manages to flip him over and a tequila sunrise style maneuver. Again, a very familiar looking submission hold for perhaps for fans of INCW. That's all I'll say, folks. I don't want to be proven wrong later, but, but that is a very telling maneuver. Ramsey able to fight his way out of it, but that, that leg has taken a lot of damage. First from that knee drop that he missed entirely, followed by a series of, of submission maneuvers. And once again, for the second time, he's cranking back, but Ramsey able to, put, to fight his way out. But again, submission hold after submission hold. Whoever this is in the mask is very adept at submissions. A master of submissions, one might say. Interesting. Can Ramsey pull his way out, though? It looks like he's reversed the pressure. Series of punches takes Wrestler X down, but Ramsey is definitely favoring that leg at this point. Slams Wrestler X face first to the mat. Twists him around, shows him that he is not the only one who can do joint manipulation. Yep, look at him. He's trash-talking the crowd right now, saying, you think you're going to count me out? You know, we, you, you've got another thing coming. What's Ramsey doing here? He's stalking Wrestler X, sends him to the ropes. Kitchen sink right to the solar plexus, and X is going to have to to take a bit of a breather. But Ramsey not letting him go far on the top rope. What's he going to do? Knee drop. That one hit the mark. Although I've got a question whether putting any extra stress on that knee is a good idea at this point. But goodness, knee right to the solar plexus from very, very high in the air. And these two are brawling outside the ring. This has been a tremendous match, ladies and gentlemen. Back and forth. Each, each competitor giving as well as they take. Ramsey sends him spine first, sends Wrestler X spine first into that barricade and stomps hard on the shoulder. And Wrestler X sent back into the ring. And Ramsey, X is far away. I don't know if Ramsey should be doing that. Ramsey high in the air and he misses the mark, giving that knee another workout, just sending it crashing into the mat. Ramsey may have injured himself here, but still manages that calamari lock. He's got Wrestler X, and he's really torquing back now, but X manages to hold his hand in between there and fight his way out. What action! And another head scissors takes the INCW champion down, and Wrestler X maneuvering Ramsey around. What's he going to try? He's stalking Ramsey, and Ramsey's leg has to be holding on by a thread at this point. Wraps him up in another Tequila Sunrise-style maneuver, and... Yes, friends, the INCW champion, Gorgon Ramsey, has been forced to tap out to this strange, unknown rookie of, of NWC. Wrestler X, ladies and gentlemen, has just beaten our INCW champion. And, and and ladies and gentlemen, hang on, I'm getting something in my headset here. I am being told that thanks to that win, yes, Wrestler X will be facing Gorgon Ramsey next week on NWC Tonight for the INCW championship. Wrestler X has punched his ticket to a number one contender position in only his, his second match in NWC. What amazing action on this final show of 2023. We have seen a title change hands. We have seen a number one contender revealed. What action. And that action does not stop. Folks, we have here in front of us a tremendous 
three-way tag team dance. Insult to injury, La Familia, and the Cold Snakes, the three teams to advance in the INCW Tag Team Tournament will now face each other in a tornado match to determine the number one contender to the Diners Club's championships. Goodness me, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what to say. This is going to be a tremendous bout. Now, for anyone confused, yes, this was an eight-team tournament originally. We were supposed to have four teams left in which two teams would face off against each other to find uh, to get to our final two teams but due to fu and sanctum going to a double count out we only have three teams left and the nwc championship committee decided let's let's get this tournament finished all three teams will face each other in one single match the winner of this match will be the number one contender to the diners clubs i and cw tag team championships La Familia managed to beat the Masons to achieve what they what they have. Um, Insult to Injury managed to beat Malibu's Most Wanted. And the Cold Snakes were also victorious in their bout. Uh, this should be an absolutely amazing, fast-paced match. And I am certain that I do not have the necessary skills to do it justice in calling it. There's going to be so much action here. It's going to be all I can do just to keep up. Coming down to the ring, the incredibly intense duo of Ravage and Rampage, known as Insult to Injury. If you've ever listened to one of their promos, you know what a headache it can be to uh, to share space in the heads of these two absolutely um, uh, unique individuals. They are intense. They are from another era, and they are they 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 want nothing more than to ascend to the very very top of this sport. Um, by any means necessary. Ravage and Rampage, two tremendously powerful, intense individuals. La Familia, again, um, a, a, a tenured INCW tag team with years of history and world championships between them. And the Cold Snakes, multi-time champions in PWA. Uh, just what more could you ask for in the backbone of a tag team division than uh, than these three teams and the winning team here in tonight's bout will go on to face the diners club and i i am led to believe here if i'm not mistaken we will be seeing that match happen next week on nwc tonight so we already have one championship that uh, we will be seeing defended next week and we have potentially a second one based upon the results of this match. Folks, we are not resting on our laurels. We are not waiting till supercards to see titles change hands. Every single week here in NWC Tonight, there is the possibility that, uh, that, that new champions could be crowned. These matches matter. And, uh, and these, these stars here, these grapplers, are, uh, they, they, they deserve the opportunity at gold sooner rather than later. Look at the humanity in this ring. This is a tornado match, folks. There will be no tagging. Uh, falls, it is the first fall to a finish. There is no rope break. There are no count outs. There is no disqualification. And... Uh, this match will continue until there has been some sort of a pinfall or a submission. Ravage just taking it to Big Tony. Look at the size of Giant Anaconda. Definitely the uh, the tallest man in the ring, but not the heaviest. That, that uh, award goes to Big Tony, a man uh, built on pasta. Junior Cobra taking a bit of a breather outside the ring there. Again, I, I have no illusions that I'm going to be able to call this match in any uh, in any meaningful way. Outside the ring, look at that. Little Anthony with a sharp DDT to Giant Anaconda outside the ring. Trying to... The strategy here has got to be isolating a man. 
Um, the best thing that little Anthony could do there with giant anaconda is to knock him unconscious, take him out of the fight for a period of time, and then quickly, quickly focus on Junior Cobra. Of course, every single man in this match is going to want to break up any pinfall that does not involve their own tag team partner. Little Anthony, just a house of fire, did tremendously well at the full effect light heavyweight number one contender match. Uh, where he fought against Mil Mojitos and Chris Knight and Junior Cobra for an opportunity at Derek Arzon's light heavyweight championship. Really, La Familia has, has, has shown themselves to be uh, real movers and shakers here in NWC. They've evolved quite a bit beyond where they were back in INCW. Bold Snakes, of course, uh, also making waves here. Um, they have seen some success. Uh, They've also um, they've also seen a few losses here. Insult to injury, though they only have they've they've been defeated one time only since their debut, um, and that's all, that, that's one defeat to three or four uh, wins. Just a, a, a tremendously potent duo. Goodness me! Look at Junior Cobra sending Ravage flying through the air, and Giant Anaconda sending ra uh, sending Rampage. Crashing to the mat with a Northern Lights suplex. The Cold Snakes teaming up to take on their old rivals. Insult to injury. I-T-I, as they are affectionately known. All of our competitors outside the ring. Again, while this is um, a no disqualification match, a pinfall or submission can only occur in the confines of the ring. So someone's going to have to get on that canvas before, uh, before this match can come to a conclusion. Ra uh, Rampage and Giant Anaconda battling to the, on the north end of our screen there. And look at Big Tony holding Rampage up, smashing him against the barricade there. Junior Cobra coming in, making sure that Big Tony can't get a proper advantage, but manages to eat a vicious knee, a flipping knee from, from Little Anthony. The, uh, the ring steps there have been bent out of shape and are leaning against the VIP section there. Hopefully someone doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't end up smashed into those. And look at that! Big Tony with a big electric chair drop on the nearly 7-foot-tall giant anaconda. Face Buster by Rampage. Oh, and look at that! Junior Cobra has little Anthony and just... Got your nose, indeed! Cobra sends little Anthony face first into that barricade there. Or, I'm sorry, into that into that uh, corner post. And our VIP is taking a powder here. Tremendous amount of money paid by those VIPs for the opportunity to sit this close to the action. I, I do not think I would feel safe doing that. Ruby Cobra with a ridiculous-looking split-style kick to uh, to to Ravage. Oh, and a big gorilla press to Little Anthony, pressing him up over and over again, and dropping him face first on the ground. Again, all eight of these—I'm sorry, all six of these men outside the ring. This match cannot end until someone is in the ring. Just absolutely dizzying action between these three teams. This is the first three-way tag team match in NWC history. And look at that. Big Tony in the middle of the ring looking the worse for wear. I wonder if anybody is going to be able to take advantage of that. And it looks as if Rampage is... Yes, Rampage is in the ring. What can he do to finish off this match? As Big Tony up over his shoulder. Tremendous running power slam on the big man of La Familia. One, two, and Tony getting one shoulder up off the mat. And look at that, just like that, Anaconda coils on Big Tony. Heads up maneuver by the silent but deadly member of the Cold Snakes. And look at that, a, a shot to the back. And Rampage goes to pin Anaconda as well, and a two count. 
rapid near falls by these team members. Rampage especially really taking advantage of, uh, of, of his positioning in the ring there. Tremendous heads-up work by the smaller member of insult to injury. Outside the ring, Giant Anaconda has Little Anthony up and just drapes him stomach first over that barricade. A lot of action happening here. They, they have rearranged some furniture out there. Those steps have, have certainly looked better. And look at this. Big Tony with a release power slam on Giant Anaconda. Bouncing his legs off of those steps. Little Anthony sent back into the ring looking pretty far gone. Someone could take advantage of that. Anthony back out, out of the ring. And my goodness, tremendous action here outside the ring as, as we have bodies completely littering the floor. Big spinning discus punch to Giant Anaconda, drawing blood from, from Big Tony. And then another big neck breaker to ravage of insult to injury. Big Tony really opening up here outside the ring. And sends Anaconda into the barricade as well. And Tony picking up. Is he going to do it? Picking up the steps. And then dropping him, thinking better of it. Little Anthony, though, thinking uh, thinking some thoughts, too. Beating up on Ravage outside the ring. All of our competitors have paired off three on three. Right now, Ravage, the only member of any team currently in the ring. And now there's no one in the ring. German suplex holding on, holding on. Rip cord clothesline on Junior Cobra by Little Anthony. If someone could manage to maneuver their opponent into the ring, we have several wrestlers who, are, who appear to be ripe for the picking. And Big Tony sends Rampage into the ring. Doesn't follow him in, though. Looks like he was just getting him out of the way so he could focus his attention on Giant Anaconda. But nope, nope, Tony is back in the ring. And look at this. Rampage has him. Spike, pile, driver. Rampage goes for the pin. One, two. And little Anthony in to make the save. And now Rampage has him, has him up. Drapes him throat first over the top rope. And he is... He is stalking little Anthony. What is Rampage going to do? Has him up again. Up again. Running power slam. Goes for the pin. One. Two. And kicks out at the last second. And eats an end of days by Big Tony. But Junior Cobra in to break it up. What action. Amazing pinfall after pinfall, finisher after finisher. And now we have several men in the ring who can finish this match up. All it's going to take is one advantageous maneuver. Right move at the right time. Satellite head scissors by Junior Cobra. Gorilla press slam by Rav Rampage. Rampage sends Cobra to the ropes. Nothing doing, not yet. And outside the ring, Anaconda has Ravage pressing him, military pressing him over and over again, dropping him on his face. And inside the ring, oh, going for another one of those maneuvers, but Cobra able to reverse it into a neck breaker, and Cobra is stalking Rampage of insult to injury. What's he going to do? Nothing. Rampage fights his way out. Has Cobra up. Has Cobra up. What's he going to do here? Running power slam goes for the pin. One, two, and three. Your winners in this tornado number one contender match, 
and new number one contenders to the INCW Tag Team Championships, Insult to Injury, Rampage, and Ravage. Ladies and gentlemen, you could not have asked for a more exciting bout than that, nor could you have asked for more deserving number one contenders. We, will, we look forward to seeing these two taking on the Diners Club sooner rather than later. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our first of two main events for the evening. Yes, that's right, folks. We have two main events. And you might be asking yourself, if this is only one of our main events, what's the other one? Well, you're going to have to watch and stay tuned. It is an INCW tradition, let me tell you. But for right now, folks, look at this. The winner of the Make Your Mark Battle Royal, Evelyn Sin, taking on the current reigning INCW Women's Champion, Anna Sokolov, with her title on the line. Now, folks, last week when we saw the Make Your Mark Battle Royal, there were two stipulations in that match. The first and most obvious was that the winner of the Make Your Mark Battle Royal would win a main event showcase match on NWC tonight, showing their skills on the main event, uh, in the main event, um, and 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 being able to really work their way up. Uh, immediately leapfrog their way to the top of that ladder. But of course, Anna Sokolov, not one to leave well enough alone, said that she too wanted to be in the match. Even though she was the INCW Women's Champion, she wanted to be in the match, and she made a proclamation for she is a fighting champion that any wrestler that could eliminate her from the match would immediately earn a shot the next week at her INCW Championship. Not only did Evelyn Sin win the whole darn Battle Royal, folks, she was also the one that eliminated Anna Sokolov. So here we are, one week later, give or take, in the main event, and Evelyn Sin has an opportunity to defeat Anna Sokolov and take the INCW Women's Championship. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second official title defense by Anna Sokolov, the third match that she's had as champion. She has no desire to be like Nikki Wilde and, and weasel her way out of championship opportunities. Uh, she wants to meet challenges head on. She is a Russian bulldozer, and she wants to fight the best of the best. She relishes this shot, this chance. But you have to wonder, has she bitten off more than she can chew? In three weeks, she has had three matches. That's got to wear on a champion over time. But look at her. You'd never know it by looking at her. Um, Anna Sokolov, confident, striding to the ring with the INCW championship over her shoulder. Anna Sokolov is a, a generational athlete. Um, she is the daughter of the former multi-time world champion, the Siberian psychopath Viktor Sokolov, but she has quickly carved out her own place in the Mount Rushmore of women's champions. Uh, she it has been um, just an absolute uh, monster in INCW, taking on and turning back all challengers. She only has one loss to her entire record, and that is... Uh, uh, a, a, a pair of losses, actually, to to uh, to Nikki Wild, the only wrestler who's ever bested her in any capacity. And after getting that monkey off her back by defeating Nikki Wild, defeating the White Rabbit um, in one of the main events of full effect, he has truly ascended to the top of the mountain. Now, folks, INCW Women's Championship matches are contested under two out of three falls rules, the first wrestler to pin, submit, count out, or disqualify uh, their opponent two times in a row will win the INCW Women's Championship, the most coveted women's title in all of professional wrestling, standing shoulder to shoulder with the NWC World Championship in terms of importance. Referee has rung the bell, and we are starting, and look at that. Immediately, Sokolov is in and clips the leg of Evelyn Sin. 
Anna Sokolov is a submission wrestler. Her finisher, the cold snap, is a vicious leg bar. And immediately, she is putting to work uh, those skills of hers and is starting to, to whittle away at the knee, at the leg, at the knee and ankle of Evelyn Sin. Now, Evelyn Sin, if she has any major advantage in this match, it is her sheer unpredictability. Um, as uh, as my colleague Gary Bloomfield is fond of saying, Evelyn Sin, she is crazier than a bed bug. She is uh, one bat shy of a belfry. She is absolutely insane by the Webster's definition of the word, and uh, and, and she wears that proudly on her, on her sleeve. Um, you never know what Evelyn Sin is going to do. So if Anna Sokolov uh, is going to win this match, what she's going to need to do is stick to her game plan. Fight this fight the Anna Sokolov way. Um, and that is going to be keeping things grounded, taking a limb and picking it apart, and punctuating every maneuver with her trademark power and precision. So far, Evelyn accounting for herself very well. This has been a very back and forth match so far. Evelyn coming off the ropes. Beautiful drop kick. Very interesting maneuver there. And immediately following Anna to the outside, running after her. But Anna turning things around with that diving choke. And yes, folks, as we mentioned, this is our second to the last match of the evening. This is the co main event. Uh, we have one more match after this is all said and done. And as far as what that match is, you're just going to have to wait a moment and see. There is a tradition uh, in INCW that uh, the NWC is is more than proud to, uh, to, to continue. And um, if you know, you know. And if you don't, you will soon. Kick to the stomach by Anna Sokolov. And follows up a kick by Evelyn. Sends Anna to the ropes, and shoulder to shoulder collision, but Evelyn Sin, feeling no pain, follows up with a big-time clothesline, picks Anna up, and slams her down in a wasteland slam. And look at that, Evelyn Sin playing the mind games. Look at that, suckered Anna in. Big slap across the face. That gave her the, le the time that she needed to, 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 to get a a uh, climactic snap suplex off. She may be crazy, folks, but she's crazy like a fox. Evelyn has Anna up. What's she going to do? Up over the shoulder and drops her throat first over that top rope. And slams her head first into the ground. Goodness me. Sokolov firing back with a series of punches and kicks. Misses a big kick there. Gives Evelyn the opening she needs. Evelyn ducks under. Leapfrog. And a big, sharp elbow right to the jaw of the Siberian cyborg. Now, Evelyn Sin um, has, has had her hands full recently with F.U. and has, has had many an encounter with Nikki Wilde, the old uh, blood rival of... Anna Sokolov, and uh, and she did uh, face Nikki one on one and defeated her, which bodes well. The one person to defeat Anna Sokolov is someone that that oh my goodness just destroys the knee of Evelyn Sin. I, I was saying the one woman that that has beaten Anna is the woman who who sh who Evelyn has already defeated. So, uh, so that really goes to show that she has the skills necessary to take on. Sokolov goes for the pin. One, two, and Anna with a kick out, but maybe not as forceful as one might expect at this stage in the match. Anna Sokolov has absorbed a lot of high-impact offense in a short amount of time. Ah, the crazy as a bed bug Evelyn Sin waving to her opponent. And, oh my gosh, she's biting her nose. That's usually a move reserved for for the Sokolovs. And, oh, look at that. Going for the, the mist, but Anna Sokolov blocked it. Went for the mist. Anna Sokolov covered up and nothing doing. Sokolov had that scouted arm breaker. And 
and pulls back into an arm bar. I think Evelyn was counting on that that blast of mist. She used that liberally in the Make Your Mark Battle Royal, but this time Sokolov able to 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 route it, sends her to the ropes, ducks under, leapfrog over by Anna. Oh, goes for another clip of the leg, but this time Evelyn's able to fight her way out of it. Catch as catch can maneuvers. Evelyn not allowing Anna to run away with this thing, and Anna not allowing Evelyn to use her entire bag of dirty tricks. Evelyn with an elbow. Again, this is a two out of three falls match, and these women have not dropped a fall yet. Evelyn Sin up to the top rope, but she's far away. Big splash gets the money one, two, and Anna Sokolov manages to get a shoulder up, and Evelyn is incensed. She thought that she had it with that big time coast to coast splash. Sokolov kicks her way out, and Siberian leg sweep. Siberian leg sweep on on Evelyn Sin right into the cold snap. In the center of the ring, Evelyn is fighting for all she is worth. Is she going to be forced to tap? Anna Sokolov is cranking back, but Evelyn punches her way out, and I believe she was laughing, ladies and gentlemen, laughing in the face of Anna Sokolov. Evelyn ha is up, has Anna against the rope, sends her away. Oh, and... Anna plows straight through her using that Russian strength of hers. But Evelyn manages to regain the advantage, stomping on, on, uh, on, on the cyborg's chest. Goodness me. Evelyn Sin um, matching Anna move for move. At this point, I've got to say it's anybody's game. She ate a Siberian leg sweep and survived the cold snap and did not give up. You have to wonder... If you're Anna Sokolov, you have to wonder what is it going to take to take Evelyn out. And look at this, Evelyn just mercilessly destroying the lower back of Anna Sokolov. Oh, big time clothesline and a second one. Evelyn is feeling it. Heel hook kick and has... Oh, but again, Anna with a heads up move manages to sweep the leg and goes back to work on the extremities of Evelyn Sin. This fighting champion doing an incredible job. Big knee shiver to the side of the face of Anna Sokolov. And Anna just blows out both knees of Evelyn. Yeah, Evelyn's going to need to take a breather there. Rolls out of the ring. Anna sends Evelyn to the corner. Comes in with a flying knee. And big time sit out. Powerbomb does not hold on for a pin. Decides for the pin afterwards. The one, two. And ladies and gentlemen, first fall goes to Anna Sokolov after a short powerbomb out of the corner. We are one fall in. Evelyn. Oh, and look at that. Big time single leg crab wow amazing submission skills by Anna Sokolov Evelyn Sin is in trouble she is one fall down what is she going to do here to take out Anna big forearm punch goes for a pin and Anna Sokolov needs to grab the bottom rope to save herself Evelyn must have felt that when that, that solid right hand had her rocked. And Anna Sokolov does not drop a fall, but she does not kick out. She grabs that bottom rope, uncharacteristic for the Russian. She does not like to, to rely on those kind of maneuvers to try to stay alive. Evelyn Sin has to smell blood in the water, even though she has a fall behind. Oh, look at that. Anna going for the cold snap. Evelyn able to leverage her way out of it. And a DDT. And she is measuring her opponent. She's measuring Anna. Has her up. And calamity. Blasts her straight face first into the ground. Goes for the pin again. One, two, and 
Anna Sokolov kicks out of Calamity. How did she do that? Evelyn Sin, satellite, head scissors, takes Anna down, goes for that pin again. One, two, and for the second time, Anna needs to grab that bottom rope to stay alive. Evelyn must be feeling it here. Anna Sokolov is in trouble. She has yet to drop a fall, but how much does she have left? Evelyn's about to find out. Up in the air, waiting for Anna Sokolov to stand. What a match, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, flying body press, but Anna catches her, slams her down. And Anna Sokolov is, is, is feeling it. What's she going to do? Has Evelyn by the head. Kick to the stomach. And full head of steam. Knee straight into the jaw of, of, of Evelyn Sin. And a kick to the solar plexus. Anna Sokolov is definitely in control at the moment. Evelyn has won Sin down. Oh, my goodness. Sin just got her leg taken out from underneath. She's, she's a fall down, and she just had her knee exploded out from underneath her. You've got to wonder if that might have torn something and if Anna Sokolov is going to be able to capitalize on it. Snap suplex on Evelyn Sin. And Anna is pressing her advantage now. What a match between these two. Twice now, Evelyn has had Anna dead to rights and just her ring placement. Oh, big time splash. One, two, and three. Folks, she never made Evelyn submit. Not one time. I don't know if that's even physically possible. But she did defeat Evelyn Sin with, a, with, with two pinfalls goodness me what a match uh, some will argue that Evelyn Sin had Anna on multiple occasions here but Anna Sokolov with a heads up maneuver able to keep her able to, to grab that bottom rope and she is your reigning defending women's champion still Whew. what action but we are not done yet ladies and gentlemen it is an INCW tradition. It is Christmas, and that means one thing and one thing only. A special annual guest taking on an NWC star in singles action. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Ho 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 Down. Billy Cody, the original Grinch, will be facing off one on one against Chris Kringle himself. Santa Claus. Yes, folks, your eyes do not deceive you. That is Billy Cody in a makeshift Santa outfit. No, I do not know what uh, what they had to pay him to get him to put that on. But you know what? Perhaps it was nothing, because Billy Cody loves nothing more than to ruin someone's good time. And you know what he wants to do tonight? He wants to stop every child out there from getting their Christmas presents. And you know why? Because he's a bad man. Billy Cody is an absolute beast, and he loves nothing more than to take than, 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 than to take a person and rub their face in the dirt. Look at him striding to the ring. Uh, wants to, to to just just stomp out every bit of Yuletide cheer in the air, and uh, he, to do that, Billy Cody on this night is going to to do his best to well to, to destroy to destroy the dreams of of children all around the world ladies and gentlemen um that, there's no other way to put it than that um what a nasty individual the outlaw is uh, they don't call him the outlaw for nothing though uh i perhaps everything that cody has got has has become is the result of uh of one too many christmases where he woke up and found nothing but coal in his stocking and, you know, I, I was told here by KB Chronic that this tradition is, is all in good fun. Um, so so I, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a, a, a gimmick-heavy, very light match between two uh, two guys looking to, to have a good time. You know, I, I jest. I, you know, Billy Cody, he's a professional. Uh, we, we, we know that he's a decorated champion. Um, so, so I'm sure we're in for, for just a, a festive fun time as, uh, as, as jolly old St. Nick himself. And um, and the outlaw uh, go at it to, to entertain the lovely people here 
in in this audience. Um, whoa, Santa looking a little bit on the on the angry side here. Um, you know, it's funny because KB told me that when Santa shows up, uh, he he doesn't come to play. He's 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 been on 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 the winning and the losing end of some of these bouts. Oh my goodness, look at that! Holy heck, Santa with some agility here. Oh man, perhaps I was I was too quick to judge uh, Chris Kringle here. He looks like he he may be uh, here with a chip on his shoulder. Well, we'll see, folks. Referee getting ready to ring the bell in this ho 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 down match. And by the way, a ho 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 down match is an extreme rules match, folks. Um, while the the victory has to take place in the ring, everything is legal. Oh my goodness! Huge Uranagi by Saint Nick. And folks, that means chairs. That means tables. That means ladders. That means everything is fair game here. And goodness, look at that! Alabama slam by Santa Claus on outlaw Billy Cody. Santa came to fight. Santa with a baseball bat and Cody saying nothing doing. You put coal in my stocking last year and uh, and I am not about to let you forget it. Billy Cody rearranging the furniture. He's got some steps and he smashes Chris Kringle in the face with steel steps. Billy Cody with a big kick to the side of the head. Oh my. This 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 became significantly more physical than I thought it was going to be. DDT outside the ring by the outlaw. By the Grinch himself. Santa with a knee to the gut sends Cody back in the ring because Santa Claus does this in the ring. He, oh, oh, sleeper hold! Sleeper hold by the outlaw on Santa Claus. Jaw jacker, though. Santa bounces the top of his head off of the jaw of Billy Cody. And Santa's got him up. Cody fighting his way out. I don't know how tall Santa is, but he seems to cut a very similar figure to Cody. Cody, though, with a pinfall, one. Only a one count. A lot of fight in jolly old St. Nick, but a lot of baseball bat in the hands of Billy Cody. Just going to town on the bowl full of jelly that he calls a stomach. Santa, though, big time shot, takes Cody down. And Santa, oh, Santa trying for the steps, too. Has this, oh, but Cody cuts him off. Has him by the back of the hat. And slams a fist right into his chest. And he is bouncing Santa's head off of the matting outside the ring. Series of punches. Punches and bunches by Billy Cody. An elbow. But Santa fighting back. Fighting back like a champion for the hopes and dreams of millions of children all around the world. But Cody says nothing doing. Cody's going to be the one to take all those presents. Going to take the sleigh, too, and sell it on the black market. Santa, backdrop, and he's got the steps. He's got the steps. Oh, but Billy Cody kicks them out of his hand. Santa sent flying across the ring. Billy Cody, just a nasty, nasty individual. Cody taking the long way around, walking around that ring, getting some feeling back in those legs. I think he just wanted to look each and every person at ringside in the eyes, each and every child at ringside, and let them know that they weren't getting any presents tonight. Santa just fighting back, though, with the heart of a lion. Oh, big time body splash. All of that cookie weight on the chest of Billy Cody. Billy Cody slammed into the barricade and Santa's looking for looking in his bag of tricks there, his bag of toys, and he's found a steel chair for all the naughty boys. Oh my goodness. Big smash to the head and to the knee of Billy Cody. Billy Cody, punch to the stomach. Oh my goodness, and another one too. You better watch out, Santa, Billy Cody says. 
Folks, this match has become significantly more high impact than I thought it was going. Oh, my goodness. Santa catches Billy Cody's hand. And North Pole Slam. I'm going to call it a North Pole Slam, folks. Because Santa Claus sure ain't from Alabama. Or from Texas, for that matter. Santa, what's he going to do here? Backbreaker on Billy Cody. Second backbreaker and just throws him like a sack of coal across the ring. Santa looking good. Looking good here in this match. Santa with a chair. Coming around the bend. Santa Claus coming to town. Oh, oh! I think I think Cody just bounced that chair right off of Santa's face. I think he might be seeing red in more ways than one. Billy Cody punched to the stomach and a series of vicious chops. Elbow punch. Elbow again. He is just taking it to jolly old St. Nick. And now Cody's under the ring and ladies and gentlemen... Billy Cody has brought a ladder into the equation. He set up a ladder between the VIP booth and the ring. What does this mean? Cody has him up, drapes him over the over the barricade, and just puts his size 16 straight into the jaw of Santa Claus. If you ever needed evidence that Billy Cody is an evil man sent here for nefarious purposes, look no further than this. This man is beating the snot out of Santa Claus right in front of an arena full of children. Baseball bat. Oh, but Santa fires back. Santa just, just bringing everything to bear. Santa has Billy Cody up, drops him jaw first over the top barricade. And deadlift picks up Billy Cody and slams him face first into the ground. And he's got the baseball bat teeing up. Shots to the back, to the spine, to the lower extremities. And a sidewalk slam on Billy Cody. Santa Claus trying to walk this off. He has taken so much damage. Oh, what is he doing? I think he's going back around and, and making eye contact with each and every fan that Billy Cody insulted and letting him know Christmas is going to be just fine, folks. Oh, my goodness. Sliding tackle kick takes Billy Cody down. And a big shoulder block to Santa Claus. Sends Santa Claus into the ring. And now we're back in the ring, folks, where this match can come to a conclusion. Will we see a finisher? Oh, sends Santa into the corner. And big time forearm. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Cody has finished many a man that way. But not this man. Santa Claus gets a shoulder up out of nowhere. And Santa hits the end of days. I believe he calls that the silent night, folks. And Cody manages to kick out, and Santa is by him, beside himself. But Santa not willing to give up. Deadlift. Deadlift picks Cody up. Gorilla presses him into the air, walks around with the outlaw. And drops him stomach first on the mat. Oh my goodness. This ho 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 down match has proven to be everything. It was cracked up. Oh my goodness. Santa Claus spine first on the on the ladder. And oh Cody just punches him right off it. Oh no. Santa's broken in half, ladies and gentlemen. He flew through the air without his eight tiny reindeer and landed spine first on that solid steel ladder. Billy Cody, not done yet, has a chair in hand and just takes Santa out. Chair shot to the head, chair shot to the back. But Santa, not done yet, has Cody up and dropped him face first on the ladder. Oh my goodness! Sends Cody into the turnbuckle. Knee to the gut. 
and again, face first on that ladder, and Cody is sp is is sporting a a crimson mask. That is not just the, his suit that's red. Sends Cody into the ring, the bloodied bully Cody, the spirit of Christmas vengeance himself. Oh, look at that, standing on the back of Billy Cody and stomping him hard in the kidneys. Goodness, Santa. Santa, no, no, not that. Don't do that. Oh, big time savage Santa elbow into the back of Billy Cody. And he sends Cody over the top. Cody's on the ladder. He's, he's on the ladder and he's unconscious. Chris Kringle... Thinking about it, what's he going to do? Watching Cody, does he have it in him to... Oh my god, what the heck? Big time splash! He's broken Cody in half and he's broken that ladder in half. Oh my god! The Santa Claus has come to town! <laughs> oh no! And somehow Cody is back on his feet and hits the huge lariat! Cody hits the lariat! Oh my goodness! Chris Kringle hit with that gigantic lariat. And that, that is usually it, folks. Can Cody capitalize? Roll Santa Claus over. One, two. Oh, no. Your winner. And, and the ruiner of Christmas for millions of boys and girls, the outlaw, Billy Cody, defeating Santa Claus in the damnedest brawl that I have ever seen. Tables, ladders, chairs, oh my. Your winner, Billy Cody. And uh, and and let me tell you, if there was ever a, uh, a candidate to be permanently put on the naughty list, it is the outlaw. Oh my goodness, big lariat outside the ring. And Billy Cody, broken nose and all, hands raised high, confident that he has truly ruined Christmas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope you enjoyed the NWC holiday special, the last NWC Tonight of 2023. It has been my pleasure to bring this to you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being with us through all of these unexpected pauses that we've had here in NWC Season 2. We had some technical difficulties, as you saw a couple of weeks ago, and of course, the difficulties that always come with trying to plan around the holiday season. But we are back. We are firing on all cylinders, and hopefully this gigantic, double-sized holiday spectacular at least partially made up for, uh, for the, the lack of NWC action over the last few weeks. Again, this is Ronnie Stockholm. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. hope you have a happy New Year, and I hope you are ready to join us for more NWC action as we enter 2024. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Hope you had a beautiful holiday season. And we will see you later.